So the idea of the series will be to do what I call AFAP, as fast as possible, tutorial on programming languages without a lot of blah blah. So let's go. So let's start with the basics of data types and operations in Python. We have integers, floats and strings. We can add, subtract, multiply, divide and calculate exponentials. Apart from that, there are various basic operations on strings, like calculating the number of characters of the string using the lang operator. We can transform the string to upper as well as lower case and we can derive substrings as well. With lists, it's pretty straightforward. You have the lang keyword, you can access certain elements as well as sublists and repent to lists. Last but not least, we have tuples, which can be accessed just like lists. Dictionaries with key value pairs, accessing each with a certain keyword, and we can overwrite certain values by key. Let's start with a simple if. As you can see, if x meets a certain condition do a, elif another condition do b, else something else. If else statements can be nested as well. So you're allowed to write an if statement inside another if. For loops are pretty easy as well with respect to the syntax. Range, for example, goes from 0 to x minus 1, so in this specific case from 0 to 3. Then we have the classic while loop, breaking as soon as a certain condition is no more met, and ranges in for loops where we can break out as soon as a condition is met. In contrast to using indices for running over a list, you can also use an iterator with a variable name, which is here item but could be anything. Using the dot items method of a dictionary, you can iterate over a dictionary as well, accessing its keys and values. Now, let's talk about methods. You want to use the def keyword followed by a method name and brackets with optional parameters inside. A parameter can be a single one as here, name, or multiple ones like x and y here. Functions do not need to have a return statement, but if you ask me, each should have, and they are called by typing their names with brackets and their optional parameters. The results can be assigned to variables as shown in line 19. Parameters can have default values, so if you don't pass it, it nevertheless is initialized. And you can use the args keyword to deal with methods with a variable number of parameters. Import modules using the import keyword, haha, <laughs> I know Captain Obvious, and call methods of that module using the dot notation. Surprise, surprise. If you want to just import a single or specific method from a module, use the from x import y notation. And use the as keyword if you want to rename an imported method, respectively if you want to give it an alias. In the context of file handling, there are multiple ways of reading a file in Python. Nevertheless, the go-to way is using the with open instruction, so there is no way for you to forget closing the respective file handler. You can read all of a file's content at once or iterate it line by line. You are free to pass options when opening the handlers, like R for reading, W for writing, A for append, and so on. There exist, for example, also special options for dealing with binaries like RB for reading binaries and WB for writing to binaries. When dealing with I.O., you should never forget handling possible exceptions. So let's talk about the try-catch blocks in Python, whereby the catch is called accept here. You can accept special exceptions like, for example, file not found in this case, but there are also some more and more generic exceptions we will talk about in a later chapter. You can use the exists method from the os.path module to check whether a file exists before making an actual attempt. And you can use the removed method from the os module to delete certain files. That should be it for basic operations. We talked already about basic error handling in Python using the try except block the other minute. Apart from having a single except, you can catch multiple specific exceptions using multiple accepts. Besides catching specific errors like file not found or division by zero, you can also catch generic exceptions using the exception class. Then, we know the finally keyword, which is executed at the very end of a try except block independent from the result in the try block, like in this case for closing the file handler, which needs to be done in any case. You can raise exceptions at any time in your code using the raise keyword and a specific string you can pass as parameter. And you can define your own exceptions by defining classes and using inheritance. Python is an object-oriented programming language, so let's talk about classes and objects. Use the class keyword to define a class and the dash dash init dash dash keyword for the constructor. Instantiate the class as follows and pass the defined parameters as shown here in two exemplary cases. Doing so, you can access its attributes and methods using the dot notation. We saw inheritance the other minute ago, but here we see it again by passing the respective car class as a parameter right into the other class electric car. Electric car will inherit from car. With the super keyword, you can here overwrite the constructor of the upper class. 
Apart from that, the exemplary hybrid car is a car as well as an electric car, so it can inherit from both and override both of its constructors. No problem at this point. Last but not least, encapsulation is also a central part of OOP besides abstraction, polymorphism and inheritance. And this is how you do it in Python. I know there are a bunch of concepts I did not go into further details with, but nevertheless, this is, as I said, AFAP, as fast as possible tutorial and we are dealing with the fundamentals. The last chapter is about pip, libraries and packages. Use Python pip to install certain libraries and use the double equation notation to specify a certain version of the library you want to install if there is one. You can use the so-called requirements.txt with all the libraries you need for your project with optional specific version numbers so users can install your dependencies with the dash r flag when calling pip install. A good way of installing dependencies is creating a virtual environment so there is no need for you to install the libraries in your systems directory. You can set up and activate the virtual env as shown in the following. Okay, that's it for learning Python in around 5 minutes. Hope you liked it. Let me know if you should do more of these. Until then, keep coding and cheers.